Welcome to the third video of chapter one, which is use midpoint and distance formulas. You will probably need a calculator for today's video. There are three objectives for today. First, we are going to calculate the midpoint of a segment given the segment endpoints. Then we're going to go backwards. We're going to calculate an endpoint given one endpoint and the midpoint. And the last thing we're going to do is calculate the length of a segment or the distance between two points. You're going to learn two formulas in today's video. As you can probably guess, you're going to learn the midpoint formula and the distance formula. So first thing we should probably talk about is what exactly is a midpoint. A midpoint is just the point that cuts a segment into two congruent segments. So let's draw this out. I have a segment. So midpoint is just right in the middle. Normally it's denoted M. And it makes the two uh, resulting segments congruent. So they're just going to have the same length, maybe 10 and 10. So that's what a midpoint would do. A segment bisector is any object that passes through a segment's midpoint. So it could be a line, a ray, another segment, a point. So this right here would be a segment bisector. So it bisects a segment. This word bisect just means cut in half. Okay, so let's just start out with an example. It says point M is the midpoint of segment VW. So before we even go on, I'm going to draw that. So I have VW and M is the midpoint. Now it's important to show that M is a midpoint. Right now M is just some point. A midpoint creates two congruent segments. So the resulting segments are going to be congruent. Okay, now let's go on. It says Vm is 5x minus 7. And Mw is 14 minus 2x. And then it says find the length of segment Vm. Now this looks similar to problems that we've done before. In problems that we've done before, though, I told you the length of the entire segment which I haven't done here. What's different is we have a midpoint. Now remember that a midpoint creates two congruent segments. So that means that Vm is congruent to Mw. So I can set them equal. Vm is 5x minus 7. So I get 5x minus 7 equals Mw, which is 14 minus 2x. And then I solve from here. So first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to add 2x to both sides. So I get 7x minus 7 equals 14. I'm going to rewrite that up here. 7x minus 7 equals 14. Add 7 to both sides. So I get 7x equals 21 and x equals 3. Now the question asks us to find the length of Vm. So Vm is going to be 5 times 3 minus 7. So 15 minus 7. So I get Vm to be 8. Okay, so that was one we did together. Now example two, you're gonna do together. You're gonna do on your own. It says M is the midpoint of RT. Find RM, MT, and RT. So right now, I would like you to pause the video and try this one on your own, please. Good luck.
Okay, let's see how we did. It says m is the midpoint of RT. So remember to show that because m is a midpoint, it creates two congruent segments. Now, that midpoint is the whole key because that tells you that RM is congruent to MT. So you can set them equal. So you should have gotten 5x plus 9 equals 8x minus 36. Solving that, you should have gotten x equals 15. You are then asked to find RM, MT, and RT. You should have gotten RM to be 84, MT to be 84, and then RT to be 168. Now, does this make sense? Let's check our answer. Well, we get RM to be 84 and MT, be, MT to be 84. Now, remember that M is a midpoint, so they should have been equal. If you got an answer where RM and MT weren't equal, that should have set off in your brain that you did something wrong. So hopefully you got 84, 84, and 168. If you didn't, go back and fix your mistake, and then move on in the video. So that was basics of midpoint. Now what we're going to do is we're actually going to calculate the midpoint. So this is where we're going to learn our first formula. So the midpoint formula, you're going to take your x's, add them up and divide by 2. You're going to take your y's, you're going to add them up, and you're going to divide by 2. So here, x1, y1, and x2, y2 are the endpoints of the segment. So let's just jump in and look at example 3. It says the endpoints of segment AB are A at 1, 2, and B, which is 7, 8, Find the coordinates of the midpoint. So I want us to sketch a picture so we know what we're looking at. We're looking at this segment, AB. A is at 1, 2. B is at 7, 8. There's some midpoint here that creates congruent segments, and that midpoint is just some point x, y. So that's what we're trying to find. We're trying to find that midpoint. So using the midpoint formula, I'm going to rewrite it. I'm going to add my x's, divide by 2. I'm going to add my y's, and I'm going to divide by 2. Okay, so in this case, the first x is 1, and the second x is 7. So I'm going to have 1 add 7, and I'm going to divide by 2. My y's are going to be the second coordinate, so 2 and 8. So I'm going to take 2, add 8, and I'm going to divide by 2. Okay, so 1 add 7, that's going to be 8 divided by 2. 2 add 8, that's going to be 10 divided by 2. 8 divided by 2 is 4, 10 divided by 2 is 5. So my midpoint is 4, 5. That's it. That, that's, that's everything. Right now, pause the video and try example 4 on your own, please. If you don't know what to do, look back at example 3 and the formula I just gave you. Okay, let's see how we did. You should have gotten your midpoint to be negative 3 over 2, comma, 15 over 2. Another way to write that is negative 1.5, comma, 7.5. If you didn't get that, you did something wrong. Please make sure you go back and you find your mistake if you did something wrong. Your work should have looked like, I'm going to add my x's and divide by 2, I'm going to add my y's and divide by 2. You have to make sure that you show your work. Um, if you have any questions, please make sure you bring them to class tomorrow. We have one more example to do using midpoint formula, and then we're going to move on to distance. So if you would please flip the page. Okay, so example 5. One endpoint is 3, comma, negative 1, while the midpoint is negative 4, comma, 2. Find the other endpoint. Okay, this one we definitely need to draw a picture, because this time we're looking at something different. Now, I have some segment, 
one of the endpoints is 3 comma negative 1, and then they give me the midpoint this time, negative 4 comma 2. They don't give me the other endpoint. So this looks different than example 3. In example 3, we are given the two endpoints. This time, we're only given one endpoint, and we're given the midpoint. So we're still going to use the midpoint formula, but it's going to be a little bit different. Okay, so my midpoint, negative 4 comma 2, is equal to... So remember, midpoint equals x1 plus x2 over 2, y1 plus y2 over 2. So my midpoint equals, my x's this time are 3, and then x. I don't know what the other endpoint is. My y's are negative 1 and y. Remember, I don't know what the other y is. Okay, so this definitely looks different. It's not as bad as it looks, though. Now, I'm going to make one equation for the x's, and I'm going to make another equation for the y's. So my x equation is going to be negative 4 equals 3 plus x over 2. My y equation is going to be 2 equals negative 1 plus y over 2. I need to have two equations because I have two unknowns. I need to have one equation to find x, one equation to find y. Okay, solving the x equation. I'm going to put this negative 4 over 1 and then we're going to cross multiply. Negative 4 times 2 is going to be negative 8. 1 times 3 plus x is just going to be 3 plus x. If I subtract 3, I get x equals negative 11. For my y's, I'm going to do the same thing. Put 2 over 1 and then cross multiply. 2 times 2 is going to be 4, so I get negative 4 equals negative 1 plus y. I add my 1, I get y equals 5. So my final answer, the other end point is negative 11 comma 5. Okay, so just a recap. We still use the midpoint formula. This time though, we had to write an equation for x and an equation for y. We solved both by just cross multiplying. I know this one's a little bit tricky, but it's important that you remember this, how to do this problem, because the example that you're going to do at the end of the video is the same. Okay, that was midpoint formula. Next thing we're going to do is distance formula. Distance formula looks a little bit worse, but it's not that bad. Distance formula is going to involve a square root. This time, I'm going to take my x's, and I'm going to subtract them, and then I'm going to square it. My y's, I'm going to subtract and then square it. And at the end, I'm going to take the square root of everything. So I think we should just jump in and do an example. Example 6, it says find the length of segment GS with endpoints G, which is negative 4, comma, negative 4, and S, which is negative 8, comma, 12. Okay, so let's just jump right in and do the distance formula. Okay, so first thing is I'm going to take those x's, negative 4 and negative 8, and I'm going to subtract them. So I'm going to do negative 4 subtract negative 8. It doesn't matter which one comes first, you just have to stay consistent. So now for my y's, since I started with the first point, I need to start with the first point again. So negative 4 subtract 12, and then I'm going to square it. Okay, so subtracting a negative is like adding. So negative 4 add 8 is just going to be 4. Okay, so this negative I'm going to turn to adding a negative. So negative 4 add negative 12 is going to be negative 16. Okay, so 4 squared is going to be 16. 16 squared is going to be 256. So my distance ends up being the square root of 272. Now, we've been working on this in class, uh, simplifying square roots. So I do expect you to simplify this square root. I'm just going to take a guess and say that 272 is probably divisible by 4. And you can check that it is divisible by 4 and 68. 68 is going to be 2 times 34. 34 is going to be 2 times 17. 4 is going to be 2 times 2. Now, looking for pairs, I have a pair of 2's here. I have a pair of 2's here. So 1, 2 from each pair comes out. 
The 17 that is remaining doesn't have a partner, stays under the root. 2 times 2 is 4, so this is going to be 4 root 17. So the distance between G and S is 4 root 17. It's always nice to get that as a, as a decimal too, just so we kind of know what we're looking at. Really, they're about 16.49 units apart. Okay, so that was the example that I did with you. Now I want you to do example 7 on your own. So calculate the length of the segment, so it's going to be exactly the same as what you did in 6. So pause the video and try example 7 on your own. If you don't know what to do, look back at example 6. When you're finished, start the video again and we'll go over it together. Good luck! Okay, let's see how we did. So the first thing that you should have done is subtract those x's, so 3 subtract 1. Then you should have subtracted your y's, so negative 1 subtract negative 7. 3 subtract 1 is going to give me 2 squared. I'm going to change this subtracting a negative to adding a positive, so that's going to become 6 squared. So this is 4 add 36. So your distance should have ended up being the square root of 40. Now simplifying that, 40 breaks down to 4 and 10. 4 is 2 times 2, 10 is 2 times 5, so I circle my pair. So you should have gotten your distance to be 2 square root of 10, because the 2 and the 5 are left over. If you got that, great. If you made a mistake, it happens. Hopefully you see what mistake you made, though. So that is the end of notes. Looking at our objectives, we did three things today. We calculated a midpoint using the endpoints, so that we used the distance or the midpoint formula for. Then we calculated the endpoint, given one endpoint and the midpoint. So that was like example number five. And then we calculated the length, the distance. So you have one example to do on your own here. This is going to be like example number five. So. When you come to class tomorrow, I'm going to be checking to make sure you have all of your notes completed and this example, at least that you put forth an effort. I will tell you that the answer to this question should be negative 14 comma 13. So that's just to help you check your answer. Good luck. Please bring any questions that you have to class tomorrow. See you tomorrow.